I would like to present a case of 25 years old, Mrs. Yen from Orkut. She is booked outside para to living to a 33 plus 2 weeks of gestation with risk factors of pericardial effusion with the mediastinal mass and right atrial mass, which is extending from superior vena cava to right atrium. At that time, the preliminary report showed suggestive of high grade B non Hodgkin's lymphoma, and she also has a risk factor of previous LS years. She presented uh, with complaints of worsening exceptional dyspnea for one month, swelling of legs for one month, and excessive sweating. Decreased urine output for one month, difficulty in swallowing solids for one month, and difficulty in lying flat and in lateral mm -hmm. position for three weeks. So she presented to Ronipet and admitted her cardio to in uh, last month, July. At that time, they have done echo, which showed a pericardial effusion. So the procedure under, undergone was pericardial synthesis under strict aseptic precaution in view of massive pericardial effusion with the features of tamponade. At that time, the pericardial fluid showed uh, no malignant cells, features suggestive of exudate. The uh, amount drain was 250 ml. Post procedure echo done showed no pericardial fluid and procedure was stopped. And the echo repeated after the procedure shows uh, right atrial mass measuring 47 into 36 mm seen in occupying right atrial cavity with increased color flow, turbulence noted across tricuspid valve and MR trace with TR trace, mild pericardial effusion seen. They suggested possibilities of right atrial maxima and thrombus. So for confirmation, they proceeded with trans esophageal echogram, which showed large mass in the right atrium, seen measuring 54 mm into 47 mm in size, extending from superior vena cava into right atrium. There also appears to be some extensive compression of uh, right ventricular outlet tract and pulmonary artery by a large extra cardiac mass, which also appears to be extending anterior to the aortic arch in the upper mediastinum, possibly lymphoma. Minimal mass vascularity noted. Right atrium was dilated. And the chest X-ray then showed a left pericardia, left pleural effusion. Ultrasound chest then showed moderate left pleural effusion measuring approximately 100 ml. So, uh, interventional radiologist uh, uh, help was sought and uh, their guided mediastinal lymph node biopsy and pleural tapping was done on 31st of July. Then, she, uh, she was discharged from them and she was asked to follow up the biopsy report. At that time, she presented to or uh, on 5th of August, she presented to OMC OPD. At that time, her vitals were, she is tachycardic with uh, respiratory rate of 28. Saturation was maintaining. Bilateral pitting edema noted. Dilated veins in the right side of the chest. Axillary and cervical lymphadenopathy present. Uh, RS system was left side decreased air entry was seen. Uh, CVS muffled outsounds heard. Her abdomen corresponding to the gestational age, abdominal wall edema present. The biopsy report at that time came as high grade B non Hodgkin's lymphoma ultrasound guided biopsy report. Overall features are more in favor of cyclin D1 positive diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So she was admitted in E ward. In the night, she was desaturating, so she was shifted to MICU. In the next day morning, emergency NBT discussion happened between hematology, neonatology, MICU, OG department, and obstetrics medicine unit involving anesthesia. Uh, they have discussed and the plan was uh, on the day of discussion, her PF ratio was 313 and she was on HFNC with 40% FIO2, tachypnic with increased work of breathing, but TLS parameters, everything normal. So bedside echo done showed no tamponade. So she was started as per hemat uh, uh, opinion, started on DEXA. That will reduce the size of the lesion and also for fetal lung maturity, she is only 33 weeks at that time. So planned for emergency LSCS in view of deteriorating maternal condition and uh, planned under general anesthesia. She underwent emergency LSCS in view of deteriorating maternal condition on uh, uh, 6th. Post-operatively, she was shifted to MICU. She was extubated on the post-operative day 2. She was put on NAV and changed to room air on the same day. Then she was monitored there for 2 days for tumor lysis and the parameters were within normal limits. She was transferred under hematology for further management. Now she is under hematology department on all CVP regimen. Retuzema, uh, cyclopasmamide, vincristine and prednisone. There are some articles like American Society of Hematology. They also treated a similar case. And according to the uh, review, uh, literature, lymphoma is the fourth most common cancer diagnosis in pregnancy with Hodgkin's only more preferable, preferring the non-Hodgkin's, a high proportion of which is primary mediastinal basal lymphoma. A case one similarly reported in the American Society of Hematology is like 37-year-old woman, woman in her second ongoing pregnancy presence to emergency with, at 30 plus 6 weeks in the third trimester with history of chest pain and shortness of breath. Uh, she also been experiencing, uh, experiencing increasing shortness of breath and palpitation. On examination, she is only tachycardic, other parameters are normal. So this is her, uh, there is uh, 
media stenal anterior media stenal mass noted so she has undergone and they suspected pulmonary embolism and ct pulmonary angiogram was done which showed the media stenal mass so ct guided biopsy was done and she was since 30 weeks first dose of chemo she received arch of regimen first dose was received and they repeated mri after uh, two weeks there is a reduction size of the tumor noticed then uh, she was induced at 35 weeks she delivered vaginally and the at uh, 21 days after the first chemo that is fourth postnatal period she was started on the second chemo six cycles of chemo uh, she completed and after that pet fdg has done which showed uh, uh, a reduction in the size of the mass with uh, uh, that metabolization everything has become normal and uh, there is no relapse for her till now and one more study which is conducted in tamil nadu coimbatore gknm hospital the uh, she presented at uh, third time to 31 weeks with the complaints of fever with chills she was admitted prior for the three times as ip in other hospital finally she came to this hospital fever work up everything done which showed negative dengue covid scrub leptospira everything they have done uh, negative the other uh, uh, finding was cervical axillary and inguinal lymph nodes so they have done ultrasound guided biopsy for that lymph nodes and that came as uh, a lymphoma and they have uh, uh it started on first dose of orchop regimen but the thing is at 33 weeks immediately after 2 weeks she had in view of uh, fetal distress like a fetus as meco uh, meconium me is meconium stain like her she went into pprom preterm premature rupture of membrane so she was undergone for emergency lses in view of fetal condition and then she repeated she received another five cycles of chemo and she is also doing good complete remission is noted the main thing lymphoma in pregnancy the most worrying thing is the gestational age at what we are identifying them and uh, uh, the, the what are the expo i mean uh, what are the imaging techniques we can use and what are the treatment op, uh, approaches for them in the first trimester first we have to discuss pregnancy termination if any urgent chemotherapy if anything is like uh, aggressive tumor we have to give the option of termination of the pregnancy from the second trimester uh it's like if there is indolent tumor we can wait and watch if that is aggressive lymphoma we have to start treatment like uh, uh benefit outweigh the risk like that the third trimester we can consider induction of labor or cesarean section depending on the maternal and fetal condition for the tumor lysis part we have to maintain adequate hydration uh in uh, antenatally if we have to maintain uh, if after 24 to 48 hours after giving uh, dexamethasone steroids every 6 hours we have to repeat the tls parameters if there is worse worsening we can correct treatable renal failure we can recombinant urate or if there is no improvement we can opt them for hemodialysis thank you the baby is doing good in nursery the baby weight is 1.9 kg baby and it's a boy baby and uh, it's a nursery baby is doing good mother has received one cycle of chemo mother is also doing good thank you are there any questions for her yeah. so what are the causes for these uh, or <clears throat> increased malignancy in a pregnancy do you look into that's like mutation lymphoma wise sudden change i mean uh, mutation So apart from the usual family is from malignancy in pregnancy is there anything else that predisposes for high incidence of malignancy pregnancy as such is not a, a it's like a trigger for any malignancy there is no family history for her also so it's it's not very really clear what's the commonest uh, malignancies in pregnancy lymphoma wise or hot skin only lymphoma wise of, of all the malignancies what are the common malignancies seen in pregnancies you look at the literature what are the common malignancies breast malignancy see breast so um, they do mention about melanoma and then lymphoma leukemias are also common but again they say it's the same frequency as non pregnancy you don't know whether pregnancy as anything there are thoughts on hormonal or uh, uh, hormones are different in among them hormonal changes they are in no suppress relative that plus increased vascular permeability those are the things thought of which is different in pregnant lady than others whether it has gotten implication that's not very clear but just to keep it in mind so this is an interesting case so the tumor was in the rh yes sir that is obstructing 
of the pericardial fluid was tested for malignancy. Uh, malignancy, sir. Yeah. Pericardial yeah. fluid was uh, negative. SVC, anterior medias, and the pulmonary So, was it primary in the other? Or was it, uh, was, was there any other lo localization? Or? Uh, we I think had it's done, uh, but she came in, uh, you know, pretty sick. Quite admitted, went into ICU, so we didn't do a staging because she had some axillary nerve. Um, and uh, but it's a lymphomite, uh, it's a surgical malignancy. Um, staging wise, uh, post negatives was planned for a complete uh, imaging to see if there are any moves anywhere else. But uh, from the initial workup, she didn't have any of that. So, sounds like a good but there's no what was the cause of a worsening was it infection you said no tls Repeat echo was normal. What was the cause of ICU? Was it infection? We think it was a tachycardia. Okay. Oh, excuse me. We know why it was there because the tamponade was clinically over the one year ago there was no tamponade. It's more like the SPC obstruction. So that's why initially we gave Dexar to just reduce the size of the tumor and it would help with the lung pressure, the lung pressure here. You presented a case report at 34 weeks, they are given chemo, no? Do we have a safety profile of that? Or risk versus benefit? Yeah, the problem is uh, risk outweigh the benefit. In that only they have given, but they are doing good. Remission wise, there is, they have followed up the baby also for 10 months. It's like no neurocognitive, any impairment for them. Mm -hmm. The concern is with the you mm -hmm. can have people, uh, the babies, uh, so uh, you should uh, check for that before vaccinating the child. Thank you. We'll move on to our next presentation from Medicine 2, Dr. Amrita.